What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. We're just here with another video, this time taking a look at the player of the week selection. Obviously I've been gone away for a couple of days getting married, so it's been a busy few days. Hopefully you guys understand, but we are back with our content now. We've got Bellingham, Lautaro Martinez, and of course Kunde as the highlights with their new player skills, acrobatic finishing from Bellingham. This is a phenomenal Bellingham card. We're going to get into that in a second. We also have Nico Williams with a little bit of dancing going on in this card. <laughs> Lovely card. And we also have a couple of the Copa America cards as well. Sanchez, Nunes, and of course Danilo uh, there as well. So hope you guys are enjoying the European competition and of course the uh, Copa America as well. I've been a bit disappointed with the Euros, I'm not going to lie. It's been, a lot of matches seem to be, yeah, they seem to be just kind of, I don't know, a bit boring or something with just like moments of excitement. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Maybe I'm just being a bit too harsh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We're going to start with Vargas, Danilo and Sabitzer. Obviously, a lot of these teams are now out, uh, but Sabitzer, I think he had a great season, man, with uh, or a great campaign with the Austrian national team. It's a fairly okay card as a whole player. Kind of a defensive build towards him, but he's got interception, fight, and spirit, and track back. Uh, doesn't have that many passing skills, true passing. You know, he doesn't have one touch. He doesn't have weighted or all lofted. So definitely is on the more defensive side, which is kind of unique for a whole player. It's an average card. I would also say that Vargas' uh, card as well could have been a lot better. I thought he had a good campaign for Switzerland. Um, very, very decent card as well. Maybe he'll get a big summer move. Who knows? But he's only 25 years of age as well. He's on A rating for the next couple of days. Balance, speed, acceleration, all where you need him to be. Tight possession probably lets him down a little bit, but he does have good player skills as well. So yeah, pretty okay to start us off. Costa, of course, the heroics that he had as well. I know Portugal are out now, but the heroics he had in the first game when they won on penalties, he saved three in a row. Very, very nice card. He's obviously got the booster as well. That's going to bring up all his, his goalkeeping skills past 90 with the manager boost, apart from catching, which you don't really need. And of course, we have Danilo here as well, who can play as a left back, right back, RCB. So left back CB and right back hybrids are really rare, especially ones that have interception and blocker with fighting spirit and one touch pass. That is extremely rare with low lofted pass and man marking and slide and tackle. Phenomenal card. You can't give him acrobatic clearance or aerial superiority or heading, but if you could, it would be a brilliant card. And obviously his stats aren't going to be exactly where you need him, but I do feel that it's still a good card if you're starting off or if you're just jumping into the journey. I've had a lot of people message me that are watching my older videos that have literally just downloaded eFootball in the last couple of weeks. It's crazy. The amount of popularity this game is gaining over the last couple of weeks with the Euros and the Cop America, it just has that knock-on effect all the time. It's just a pity Konami don't embrace that a little bit more other than cards, which there's plenty of them, as we know. Sanchez in midfield as a destroyer, or sorry, as a centre-back, um... He can play as a destroyer. I thought he could play DMF, sorry, boys. Jumping physically, very, very, very nice. Speed is pretty decent as well for destroyer. Blocker interception, area superiority, heading and accurate clearance. Yeah, exactly what it says on the tin. You know what you're going to be getting with a destroyer that has 80 plus speed, aggression 95 plus, 94 plus, and all his defensive stats over 85. Not going to be top tier, but definitely good enough. We also have Schlotterbeck as well as a build-up. Pretty decent speed. I thought he had a good uh, campaign as well. Um, aggression, defensive engagement, physical contact, and jumping with speed, defensive awareness, and tackling. All extremely good. And of course, he has all the player skills that you could possibly want as well. So yeah, very, very good card. This Bellingham card, as right, as a booster, it is a really nice card. I think the trick with Bellingham, and I've said this for a long time, if you are playing a creative or an attacking base player, having 80 plus aggression with the manager boost is really, really nice. And I say this because I feel that with Bellingham, because he needs to win the ball back and he gets around the pitch quite a lot, he's got such high stamina. It's kind of like built in that he's kind of like a box to box while still being a creative uh, type of option. He's one of the most solid cards in the game. Literally all his stats are over 85 in attack, apart from heading, which he doesn't really need because he's got the height to overcompensate for that. And of course, he's also got the physicality plus three here on A form. And he's got fighting spirit, double touch, flip flap, and soul control, interception, acrobatic finishing for his booster um, and his skill. And obviously the, the, there is another Bellingham uh, that's going to be coming. And there is, uh, there is going to be, that's going to be coming Monday. Um, but I do feel as if Bellingham will get to that in a second. I thought I had it here, but maybe I don't. This is the Bellingham that's coming, obviously, that we're going to see here as an attacking midfielder that's going to be coming. Um, but I do feel as if that this Bellingham definitely does still stand up to those cards. It's just a really nice card. I mean, obviously, he's not going to have massive acceleration compared to other cards. But it is a very, very good card with the booster, especially physically. And his balance is going to be good as well. It's not the best Bellingham card. 
but I do like it. And then, of course, we do have Darwin Nunes, who's down as a speedster. This Darwin Nunes card is pretty decent as a goal poacher. Double touch, dip and shot, penalty specialist, aerial superiority, with one touch pass and first time shot, long range shooting and curl, and dip and shot with fighting spirit. A lot of mixture, a lot of stuff going on there. He also have incisive run and speeding bullet, which is pretty decent, which I do like. Speed and acceleration is his, is his highlight here. His tight possession lets him down, his balance lets him down. Other than that, it's a fairly good run in a straight line type of center forward. Just let the AI make the runs. And to round it off, we have Jules Koundé, who is an attacking fullback, having a good campaign with France as well. Scored a beautiful penalty the other day in the shootout as well. Absolutely top ins. Speed, acceleration, balance. Bit of a letdown, but you don't need balance unless you're running the ball with him too much. Blocker, interception, sole control, one touch pass, through passing. So a bit silky and a bit rugged as well as an attacking fullback. Very defensive for an attacking fullback, which I do like. And I do like this card. I like all iterations of Koundé. Nico Williams has probably been the star of the show. Spain looked the real deal. He's down as a left winger that can play left side, right side. Doesn't really matter. He's down as a really, really good option here. So control. He has double touch. He doesn't have flip flap, which is a bit of a pity, but he's got a really nice double touch animation. Really quick, really fast. Dribbling, balance, acceleration, and speed with the manager boost is going to be all at 90. That's all you need uh, for a winger. So yeah. And then to round us off with Lataro Martinez. Now I'm going to be honest. I genuinely have never really given Martinez the credit he deserves, even with his booster here. Looking at his card without the booster, cut behind and turn, chip shot control, dip and shot, long range shooting, acrobatic finishing, first time shot, and super sub with fighting spirit. As an option off the bench, with off the rip, attacking awareness, ball control, and finishing, without any manager boost being over 92, phenomenal. Really, really good card. He gets in good positions. I think what lets him down is his balance and his tight possession. He's definitely not like an end game level goal poacher, but I know some people absolutely rave about him. So, all in all, all in all, I think it's a pretty decent player of the week selection. I think player of the week selections have a bigger issue at the moment because, for example, what a lot of frustration that's creeping in now is say you go for Bellingham here and then Monday you have this Bellingham from the Showtime player of the season for the Spanish League or La Liga. That's going to be coming out. It kind of creates, you know... It creates, a, it creates just like a constant need to want the new card, you know. Um, and I do appreciate that Konami have tried to switch things up with, you know, certain players having boosters or whatever. And the fact that you can grind for these cards a little bit by simming games or playing against the AI yourself. But yeah, I do feel like that they need to switch it up other than just being cards. I mean, it would be so much better if you just had like, you know, a skill token that you could get and you could just guarantee yourself one of these players. You know, I think it would make it, even if the grind was maybe, you know, five hours of gameplay, you know, where you had to like get, you know, 15 goals or something with a Bellingham card to unlock this Bellingham card. I don't know. We'll do a video on it and a couple of features I'd like to see for eFootball 2025. But other than that, lads, yeah, I think it's a fairly okay player of the week selection. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Did you spin or not? Let me know.